just as an overview, discussing gold, uh, 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 something that I was right about and something that I was wrong about. And I have no problem being wrong about it. That's part of trading. You have to recognize the drivers. In the sell-off in gold from May, and I'll put all those charts up in a minute, uh, uh, it was correct of me to assume that there was a seller above the market, um, not just Venezuela. And it was also correct of me to, for some reason, well, not some reason, to tie the descent in gold to the descent, uh, to the increased uh, trade war issues. Now, that uh, seven, geez, I mean, like three months, let's put that up there. On a weekly chart, it looks just, it's a disaster, right? Okay, so if you can draw the lines here, this period uh, from May through until this turnaround uh, was when gold started to sell off and is when the funds, well, below 1296 is when the funds started accelerating. Below 1296, the, the funds started getting short. And, you know, they were right for a long time. And the question is, why were they right? The answer is, you know, I think you've heard me say before, or I've written about it before, that gold has been acting more on the U.S. dollar uh, Chinese yuan pair than the typical uh, uh, dollar yen and dollar euro. Uh, and and uh, that was, uh, uh, I thought, a product of the trade wars. Um, and I may be wrong there. Uh, the trade wars may be a reaction to what had been a beginning of a pegging way back in April. Uh, based on uh, last gold fix you can review, uh, what I'm getting at here is uh, the funds got short going into the um, uh, this, this trade war thing uh, because they knew that uh, they believed in a macro proper sense that uh, the gold price uh, was closely tied to yuan. And as the yuan weakened, the price of gold would weaken. Well, that's true. And then what is, you know, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, coincidentally called the golden week, which was two weeks ago, we wrote about uh, that the PBOC is inactive during that time. And they may be active indirectly through London, but they're inactive directly. And during that time, gold crept higher. And that comes in uh, in this area here. Oh, sorry about that. That comes in in this area here on a weekly chart, this first week higher. And, and when Golden Week was over, um, uh, you could... You would not know which way gold should go, but if gold went higher during Golden Week, uh, uh, you would just, for whatever reason, gold would sell off the week after. So, so here's where I was wrong. I was wrong because last week, and I don't have the chart handy. I had it handy. I can find it. Um, last week's commitment of traders came out, and although it's only to the middle of the week, it doesn't have those explosive moves on Thursday uh, and or Friday. But the funds got, they started piling on more shorts when Golden Week was over on Monday and Tuesday. And, and in, a, in a kind of regression to why would they add at such levels or, or why would they add so many shorts? Uh, and I said, well, it coincided with the end of Golden Week. And uh, uh, whatever it is, they thought that they would, the Chinese would be debasing Yuan more and or possibly selling gold, if not buying it. And uh, we saw what happened at the end of the week. So the first two days of the week, you see the commercials uh, buying more and the funds getting uh, steeply shorter. I'll look for that chart. I have it somewhere. It's probably mixed up with my natural gas stuff. Uh, but what ended up happening was uh, after Tuesday, which is what our community traders report goes through, gold uh, obviously took off. So why did it take off? Um, um, Whatever the catalyst, uh, the short started to cover. And uh, Friday was uh, a get me out on Friday type of situation. Incidentally, give you an idea, we are called um, significantly higher. So why don't we get to that uh, on an hourly basis? Now, you see this red line here. Uh, on Friday, uh, I had a trade on long gold at 1222. 
uh, with a stop at at 12, 20 and a half. And uh, that was a system based, although it doesn't show on this chart, that was a system based uh, signal. And I was, uh, I wasn't stopped at a 1220 and a half. I took it off at 1222 and a half. Um, and I'll show you that right now to give you an idea uh, of what uh, we do have going on. Uh, where is that? There it is. Okay, here's Friday's activity. Uh, uh, I shorted CFG, uh, but uh, you'll notice that about on 10, 12, about 11, 19 a.m., I'm buying gold, long gold at 12, 23, 10 with a stop out. Whoops, with a stop out. Nice picture, uh, pictures there at 12, 20 and a half with a soft target of 12, 27, 10. And I closed the position out at 12, 22 and a half uh, uh, in patience. Uh, but what ended up happening is I would have been stopped out anyway uh, because uh, the market did trigger that 12, 20 and a half level and it went below that later on in the day anyway. But the point is, uh, my stop was too cute. Uh, the market uh, uh, clearly took off. So why don't we get to uh, the charts and, and the reality of what's going on today? Uh, so first of all, uh, let's start with uh, the currencies. Well, that's, let's just work our way around the globe. Okay, so global markets are uh, in the stock market. Uh, basically, you have uh, global markets are lower. Um, uh, let's see, uh, looking at this. Yeah, so you had a little bit of a bid in the bonds. Uh, the 10 year yields are off the one to three basis points. Italian bonds are bouncing a little bit. Uh, uh, Brexit, uh, nothing going on there, but uh, that, that could be big when it happens. Uh, the euro has bounced from a four month low. Uh, uh, what we're getting at here, I think, uh, when we get through all this and get right to uh, gold, is that the dollar is down very little and gold is up. A percent, fourteen point fourteen dollars or so. What was until recently a market that uh, would sell off a lot quicker on a goal on a dollar rally than rally on a uh, dollar sell off has now reversed, and gold is now overperforming relative to how the dollar performs. And uh, you could say that could be the aberration. Maybe gold should be sold, but I would say, and, and I am biased uh, to the bull side. But I would say gold has outperformed every paper currency for the last 10 years, uh, with the exception of, uh, with there may be more than one exception, but with the notable exception of the last six months. So this could be a return to gold uh, uh, correcting itself uh, back to its normal behavior relative to the dollar. So uh, why don't we just uh, go through a couple charts quickly. Uh, because I think today is a good day, since we discussed this so much uh, with regards to equities, today is a good day to go through um, the system that I use, because it is non-technical. I'll give you some technical numbers and what to look at for today uh, in gold. And and if, if you're looking at gold, you are by proxy looking at other currencies. So, uh, for example, there's nothing really moving violently uh, today. Uh, actually, I have some information on the S&P as well. Uh, Michael Moore, the technical analyst, uh, I asked him to throw some S&P stuff uh, into his work, and, and he started doing that recently. So why don't we do this? Uh, on the website, on the opportunitytrader.com, I just put a post up called the Gold Fix October 15th. If you're on the site, and that this post is free to all uh, accompanying this uh, conversation, I would say open the Gold Fix up. All right, and we can just go through these charts. What we're looking at here is is uh, the chart that everyone knows about. This is the monthly chart. The white dotted lines are the, the monthly lines that everyone cares about. I added another one. Uh, there is a yellow line there. You'll see that. That's actually a, actually a weekly line drawn on a daily. Uh, I favor trend lines right now. Uh, uh, there is the, the weekly trend line. And I like to draw trend lines that are violated and then reassert themselves. So the first two points I connected were... Uh, the, the the beginning of the line and that first uh, that steep uh, decline in red I connected that and extrapolated the lines there so it gets violated uh, so it's oversold it's oversold a little bit in uh, in beginning of 2017 and and it's you know theoretically we're hoping right it's oversold between July and October so that's that trend line uh, now looking at looking at uh, why did I put this up here this is 
right, the same trend line on the monthly basis alone without any other noise. And you could see how uh, it uh, manifests on a monthly chart after being drawn on a weekly and it actually is uh, uh, consistent and quite, uh, uh, it's a different perspective, it's quite revealing. All right, moving on to, I think, what people should be looking at more macro here. All right. The system that I use for trading to keep my own intuition in check is a volatility based system. And I've talked about it enough times. But what I want to talk about now is, is the uh, when it, this is on a monthly chart, when it tells you you're going to have an expansion of volatility and uh, it's right. So, so the ovals are correct. Uh, there haven't been any incorrect ones actually uh, uh, on the monthly. Uh, the most recent one happens uh, in September. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and close up that. All right. In September, just to, to give you a little bit of insight into how this works. In September, the market settled below the Bollinger Bands. Now, that in and of itself means nothing. But settling below the Bollinger Bands with the op the wide part, the top and bottom band going in opposite directions is a signal that volatility is about to increase. Now, it doesn't give you a direction. Now, normally, you would be bearish uh, uh, on, on the way I adapted the system with a stop out at the Bollinger Band line. And if you had done that, you would have been stopped out. But uh, it does call for an increase in volatility. And we have seen that. And if you, if you look closely, uh, you'll see uh, there's also another clue there. I look at historical volatility and implied as well, but that's not showing. Uh, so what we are looking at here is is uh, a market that basically has told you volatility is going to expand, did not give you a direction. Well, it gave me a direction lower. Uh, I didn't and trade it on a monthly basis, but now it's reversed. Uh, it's not unreasonable when this happens, and it sounds crazy, but to go to 13, to, top, to the top of the band. Uh, when it pierces through the bottom, it goes to the top, especially in the monthly. So 13.30, 13.40, not a crazy idea. I would definitely say 12.60 is not something that's crazy. But uh, why don't we give some real reasons for things? Okay, here's the weekly chart uh, on, on a breakout lower. And uh, despite giving this trade to a client, we only took $10 out of you know 120 or whatever. So that signal has been over, and we wrote about that as such uh, back in – August, we wrote about that. Now we we pretty much mission accomplished. If you want to look at this chart, uh, yeah, we could go to 1260, but uh, I, I wouldn't be excited about the market going higher right now uh, without a pullback. But again, that's a macro comment. During the day, I'm going to see different things. All right, here's the daily. Uh, on Thursday, uh, the market broke out and uh, gave us a buy signal. I did not buy it. Uh, I did buy the pullback uh, in the next day on the red bar, uh, looking for higher uh, on the system. Uh, and we did have a very, very short uh, bull uh, flag there. And I got stopped out and the market went higher. So there you have it. So I lost 60 cents, risked $3 to make seven, and I'm out and I missed the market. And that kind of pisses me off. But what are you going to do? All right. So here we are on the four hour. And this is uh, done pretty recently. The four hour uh, uh, using the system as a regression to the mean system says we're a little bit overbought and that it would not be crazy to be short uh, with a stop out on new highs. And that's because we're back in the Bollinger Bands and they're no longer widening. Keeping that simple. All right. I think this is what everyone uh, in the macro world is looking at right now. The dark line is the 50 day moving, this is a daily chart. 50-day uh, moving average. The light line is the 200-day. So you'll start seeing headlines now. Gold is going to 1280. It's going to the 50-day, uh, the 200-day moving average. 200-day moving average doesn't really seem to mean a lot to gold. I mean, it may to you, depending on how you use it, but not as much as say in silver, where the 200-day moving average seems to be something that is repelled constantly. I have a chart of that somewhere. I can pull that up. Um, but uh, we're well above the 50-day moving average, and it's just turning upward. Uh, I would not be surprised if we have a sell-off bringing it back to that. <clears throat> that. That said, I'm not selling it to strength. It's not something I do. Uh, 
this uh, we're coming back to the monthly here before we get into some other other stuff. Uh, I want you to understand that this is the holy grail for macro traders, for smart funds, for for the gun locks who are who said I'm I'm bearish on the 1290 uh, uh, in 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 April, and who said uh, uh, you know Biden the 1200 area. I don't have a reason for that, but the dark yellow line is the 12 month moving average, and when we set all above it. You have an average rate of return between three and five percent, and when we settle below it, you have an average loss of uh, one to three percent. Uh, the idea being, long on a settlement above and flat on a settlement below. Uh, yes, you have to wait thirty days, but that's the reality of it. That line underneath is really not that relevant. All right, so let's get to the technicals. Uh, let's focus on the gold area first. Uh, Michael Moore, I am writing this from the higher call. Look for possible exhaustion. Uh, in the third in the 1234 60 to 670 area all right so he's basically saying if you're long get out of your longs in that area which is where we are now possibly get along above that uh, on a reversal uh, it looks to me like he's looking at a lot of profit taking in this area uh, even though it's been a lot of short covering on the downside uh, well he does actually he does we break above here back up 1263 all right so my numbers are uh, we're on the upside are well i don't really have any between here and 1270 so uh i'd have to look and do a reanalysis of it but for me uh for me we're going to 1290 uh because that's a 12 month moving average and that's uh, where i think things are going to happen on an insight from uh professional research that basically front runs its own clients CTAs are very short gold. Those that are still in the gold market are short gold and have been short gold since 1250 and higher. Um, uh, that's above and beyond the, the, the professional uh, larger macro hedge funds. What I'm getting at here is I think we, if we get in the 1250 area for no technical reason, this is information and flow trading reason, I think you'll start seeing CTAs stop themselves out. So we could have some stopouts in that area if we get there. Uh, I imagine the commercials will be selling into it as they've been getting long for the last uh, month in anticipation of a move like this. All right. Uh, this is a post from uh, September 30th uh, by Gold. Surf the wave. Watch indications for toppiness. Get out. Get, get short. The long trade. Build a core position. And this, this is the last advice we gave a client. Uh, build a core position. And decide how much more you'd want to risk gold goes under 1188. I uh, barely touched that. Um, this was written on September 30th, actually. Uh, so I want to put on half now and half if we get under 1188. Uh, and it then reverses back up. If you buy half now and we get no dip, uh, what could go wrong? So what could go wrong? A lot could go wrong. I would encourage you to uh, take a look at that uh, because it goes through um, specifically uh, what is what the situation is with regards to uh, the market itself. Now, if there's anyone who has any questions about equities, actually, let's go back to um, Michael Moore leaves a message, special delivery for, uh, for uh, Larry Benedict uh, uh, on my request. Note, in the S&P, there is another line that comes in at 271, 2714, his decimals are all over the place. 2714 spot 75, a decent break below which should further fuel the downside. If we break below it and reverse back above it, uh, expect shortcoming to come in. So uh, there's your S&P information. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate that very much um, from uh, Michael Moore. So we have uh, the overnight recap and we have some other things to talk about. Right, it's 12:22, so why don't we just look at a couple of stocks? If anybody has anyone to put it, they want to put in, uh, be happy to uh, see what you have. But I don't see anything showing right now, so why don't we just go to silver? All right. Um, actually, I have a, a picture of this that's that does it justice. Written by, uh, let's see, where are we? Boom. Okay. Here's today's technical numbers in gold. Um, you can take a look at those. Take a screenshot of that if you'd like. 
Average daily range is 990. So we've had some serious ranges. Volatility starting to expand. This is a lot for gold. Uh, it's 823. I don't see any questions coming. I want to leave you with this. Gold is no longer a United States market. Uh, it moves during Asian time and European time. And whatever happens in the United States is the tail of the market, uh, unless Trump says something outrageous. So what I'm getting at here is we are now in a situation where it's buy it during Asian hours and sell it during U.S. hours. There's really not much to add today, but numbers on the upside, if you're swing trading, uh, if we stabilize above, if we if if we stabilize, if we stabilize, go sideways below the 34 area, it might be time to get short as it's also inside of one of my signals. Uh, my cost 1228 and a half at 1230 uh, on a trend line. Uh, I don't really see a lot of uh, uh, to do today except maybe swing trade uh, below 34 and uh, cover around a 37 stop and possibly look for another leg of the rally, believe it or not, up to 1260 today, tomorrow, or Wednesday. That said, uh, I'm more inclined to think that uh, uh, we're overbought right now. And if you're looking at it just on a U.S. chart, uh, the gold market uh, uh, should retrace a little bit. Uh, one other thing I said that is not correct so far, uh, I said if we're in a sustained rally, silver will lead the way. And uh, it looks like silver is not leading the way here. And I think people are getting destroyed on those gold silver spreads. Silver's up less than a percent. Gold is now below 1234. Uh, I'm considering getting short here with a 36 stop. Um, I'm going to leave you now because it's 830 coming up. Larry will be coming on and uh, uh, look for uh, any decisions which are made for trading in the chat room itself. Uh, but on my radar is selling gold here with a new high or a 36 stop, uh, which is obviously a tight stop. And um, I have nothing else really on the radar in gold, except maybe if it does go above 37, you might want to consider uh, being long or bailing on shorts. It's a simple market. The move was made last night. And uh, like bonds in the old days, it makes its move and it's over. Keep your eye on any commentary out of China. Uh, uh, as their currency uh, seems to be decoupled from gold right now, but it certainly is uh, the trade wars are having uh, an effect on gold. Uh, they were bearish. They don't seem to be bearish anymore. Go figure. This is Vince Lancey. Good luck and have a great day trading.